whose image are we created in? God's. What did God do when he created? He spoke. Whose image are we created in? What did God do when he created? Now, doesn't it stand to reason that the enemy of your soul would like you to shut up and like to scare you into silence? Because he doesn't want the creative force of the holy God of the universe coming out of your mouth. But there is power in your mouth. you the devil doesn't like what's going on today and he doesn't want us to sing victory in Jesus you know I grew up a Baptist preacher's kid and I was I was worried about it being about performance a lot anybody identify with that but the reality is we don't go to church and get stars for attendance and behavior we are church we go to meetings in buildings of the church and Jesus won the victory for us he did all the work there's nothing we could have done to earn it. And so the pressure's off. So the devil doesn't want us to get that message very good. He wants us to keep striving and uh, laboring in vain rather than leaning on the good name of Jesus and his work that we saw accomplished today. And we're going to see accomplished all through this administration. And we, the church, are going to have the opportunity to rise up where the government has to cut back and we can fill those holes for all the needy, all the widows, all the orphans, all the homeless. And the church can do its job in the community with the provider of everything providing for us. He has no limits like our government does, and he doesn't have to tax us to get it. We just are funnels for his goodness and his provision and his wisdom and his hope and his vision for this country. So our prayer is that it pours out tonight and doesn't stop on you beautiful people of God. I see it, you know, much like a, a fishing trip, essentially our lives. And the word tells us there are so many things you get context clues all over the, the word and they all fit together to point somewhere. Um, one that's real important to me that I, I repeat a lot is life is but a vapor. It's in James here for a little while and then vanishes away. So I like pulling back, looking at big perspective in order to make smaller you know, step-by-step -step daily decisions because those are reflected in the big picture. So if you can get the idea that this world is not your home, you're just passing through, life is just a vapor, this stuff passes, then you can start to let go of the natural stuff all around you. Obviously you live in it and you need it at some level, but it certainly shouldn't be as important as it's, it's lifted up to be. And if you focus on uh, God's preparing a place for us. Eye hath not seen, ear hath not heard, nor hath the mind of man conceived of what he's preparing for us. You know that life's a vapor. You know that this world's not your home. You know that treasures that we lay up here rust. They're stolen and they break. And up there they don't. So when you buy into the, the whole picture, then it becomes simple to know what to do. If life really is that short, then we need to be about winning folks to, to the Lord, giving them the love of Christ. Use all means at your disposal and give with no strings attached. Because in that, you earn the right, then at some point they're gonna say, why are you doing this? What's in it for you? Well, there's nothing in it, and this is specifically for me. Jesus is the one who gave me everything.